Hey everybody, welcome back. This is day two of the Tempkin bearing conversion on this 2007 twin cam for Dorothy and Daryl out of North Georgia, two of our wonderful channel members. Great, great people. Uh, if you didn't check out the first installment, we posted that one yesterday, I believe it was. So you'll want to hop in and watch that. Today we're going to finish up. We're going to press the Tempkin bearing sleeve in and then uh, pop the crank in and then we'll check bearing in place. So stick with us. One of the most common questions I've gotten after running that video yesterday had to do with how does this compare to an M8? Well, if, if you check out the playlist that this video is in, the M8 versus twin cam, the idea is to demonstrate to you guys that the M8 is not as different as you think it may think it is uh, than, than what the twin cam is. It's equally as important to do this on an M8 as it is a twin cam uh, because they're capable of making so much more bolt-on power than what a twin cam is. So there's really no difference uh, in the, the need for it, the reason for it, and, and the process is actually uh, similar. So let's dive in. Of course, cleanliness is next to godliness. Uh, we've cleaned the case entirely. We have brushed out all of the holes. Everything is spotless in here. We've also brake cleaned everything. Uh, we have cleaned out all of the holes. We want to make sure there's nothing in there so our uh, bearing retention compound in Loctite holds it firmly in pace, place. Got all the holes drilled, beveled each of the holes. We have our fixture in place to hold the case back there. And so now we can uh, get started. This is press fit lubricant on this area here. We wanna make sure not to get any of this on this area here. This is where our bearing retainer compound will go. You don't have to use too much of this stuff. It's extremely, extremely strong. It goes a long way. What what comes in the in the kit? This amount right here is is plenty to do the sleeve and and also all the the screws that secure this into place. You have to be careful when you do this. Also, you'll notice there's a locating pin right there, and one that mates up right there. You want to make sure you're seated inside that locating pin. got to remember this you know this piece is precision ground and machined within a tenth of a thou so you want to make sure your press is within ten thou of of level and i know this press is spot on the money i always like to do a visual just to make sure i'm centered I always like to relieve the pressure. And let's go back at it again. To make sure this is seated all the way, you wanna press this in to between two to 4,000 pounds. So we're gonna to go to 3,000 pounds. And we're there. Excellent. Just want to confirm that we're seated all the way around. And we are, it looks fantastic. Perfect. Let's put our screws in. I also like to apply a little bit of this to where the 
the taper of the screw itself will be mating against the sleeve. Just another little bit of added protection there. And then these are gonna be tightened to 30 inch pounds, 25 to 30 inch pounds. Now we can remove this. Now we can install the bearing races. We use a little bit of press fit lube. head over back to the press. Now we can install the race for the opposite side. And back to the press. Okay, you can see both of the bearing races are pressed into place. Everything looks great. I've already pressed the one side of the tapered Timken onto the sprocket shaft. I'm going to go ahead and put some assembly lube on it. Now, you can see a multitude of spacers here in various thicknesses, anywhere from 100 thousandths to 115 thousandths, give or take. So the idea when we're talking about bearing in play, this is a spacer that we're looking for here. This is going to drop down, and then this bearing will be pressed on top of it after the case is put here. So the case, then this bearing pressed in. That spacer is what determines the end play of the crank. So you have all these multitude of spacers and what we're shooting for here is two to three thousandths of an inch. I'm going to shoot for two to two and a half thousandths is what I'm looking for. So I've measured through all these spacers and found one that I think is uh, it's going to be an educated guess here. I think this is going to work pretty well for us and we're going to try this one. And I'd like to go ahead and put assembly lube on it on the off chance that uh, we'll get this right the first time and not have to take it back apart. If something happens and we're off by as much as a half a thousandths. I'm going to disassemble this entire thing again and change the spacer and and try again. Now we'll lube this bearing. Put a press fit lube on the inside. Now, let's head over the press and press it together. I apologize to you guys. I had no idea my battery died halfway through and I'm just talking and working away. So we're gonna start over. What uh, what you missed was me over on the press, pressing this half of the Timken bearing into the case. Then I've also installed this steel plate over here so that I have a rigid structure for my mag base. And then I'm, I've set up a dial indicator here on the end of the, end of the sprocket shaft. 
And the idea is to check this end play. I want to see how much axial movement the case has. And we're, again, with that spacer, we're adjusting with the spacer, we're at the separating the bearings and adjusting the distance between the two. So my goal here is to have two thousandths as my target. Uh, the motor company says you can go up to two or three more thousandths more than that, but we're not going to do that. So my goal is to be at two thousandths with a half a thou tolerance. So I don't want to see any more than two and a half thousandths uh, on this. Now, if we are, we if it's not at two and a half, two to two and a half thousandths, then we will have to press this flywheel assembly back out of the case to re remove the bearing, change the spacer, put another spacer in, and repeat this process until we get it right. So we hope we get it right the first time. This is a half thousandths indicator and I have it set on zero. So I'm gonna lift up on the case slightly. And let's see where we're at. That's one, two, we are at two and a half thousandths on the money. Let's see, one, two, if I pull up very hard, I'm at two and a half. One, that's almost lifting the, lifting the flywheel assembly off the table here. Actually, I may be a little less than that. Reset my gauge. One, two, at maybe two and a quarter thousandths. So we have absolutely nailed it the first time. Excellent. That pretty much wraps it up. Timken bearing conversion and setting crankshaft in play. Of course, the next step of the process, we would uh, install the crankshaft spacer, then we would install a main seal, flip the case over, and then we're going to put in the other case half. We've already replaced the bearing in the right-hand case half, so everything is good down here on the bottom. And so that's what we're going to cover on the next video, assembling this case, and then we're going to start build and work our way up to start working toward the end of this series on twin cam versus m8 skunk works build of course we've got to do the same thing to an m8 which will be following this one guys once again thanks for watching actually what i've done as part of this twin cam and m8 series i've put them all into a playlist i'm going to put a link to the playlist somewhere up here so that you can see all the videos that kind of pertain to doing a build like this and blueprinting and what that's all about we got lucky on this one uh measuring all the spacers kind of had a hunch and we uh, nailed it the first time if we didn't nail it the first time and get that two to two and a half thousandths then we would have to repeat the process as if it was you know an original Timken case we would have to press out the flywheel change the spacer press it back together measure it again it's part of the process that a lot of people don't realize it's not as simple as pulling parts out of a box when you're blueprinting an engine and bolting things together. Sometimes you have to put things together, take them apart. You may have to do it two or three times to get it just perfect. And that's another reason why fully blueprinted engines built proper cost what they do. Guys, thanks a million. Thank you to all of our channel members for supporting the channel, all the subscribers. I still have that goal and I'm hoping you guys can help me out with your shares to hit 20,000 subscribers by the end of this month. We're at 19,300 as of right now. So I hope you guys can help me out with that. We'll see you on the next video. Take care of yourselves and each other. Have a good one.